I got some shocks broke down here. These are some King 2.5 IVP coilovers. IVP internal bypass is what this stands for. Um, got these broke down because these are in for some rebuilds, new oil, new seals. Um, if you've never seen these apart, uh, this is part of the IVP and then the extra valving stack right there. And then there's also some components inside the shock there. And then they have a kind of a specific specially designed shock shaft that go in these shocks. And this is a video that I wanted to make for quite a while. And since I had these in here, I'm finally able to make this video. So what I have here is a Fox 2.5 inch coilover. And this is also internal bypass and IVP shock. Um, the only difference between the two is that is King's design and this is Fox's design. If you uh, watch my channel, then you probably know my Blue C10. So this shock is off of my truck and I uh, got this pulled off of the front of my truck the other day and wanted to do a breakdown on this. Uh, my truck, dune season is getting close here anyway, and my truck needs some maintenance. I need to get all my shocks rebuilt anyway. Um, so I figured I'd get one of them right now. I at least tore it apart. I only need one of them ripped apart to show you um, the differences and some things I like, don't like, what I prefer. Um, yeah, anything, internal bypass shocks, Fox and King differences. And yeah, I guess if you have any questions, maybe put them in the comments. And if I have to, I can do a part two on this. But for now... I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, springs off this and get this shock all broke down and laid out like these. And then I'll go ahead and get into it. Well, this is what I get. I had to, uh, I said my truck needed to have some maintenance. I needed to rebuild my shocks. If you rode in my truck uh, last season towards the end of the year, I might have told you my shocks were blown out, and uh, I, but I didn't have time to rebuild them or do anything. And, yeah, I wasn't lying. I just had to uh, take the nitrogen out of there, and a bunch of oil came out. And so then also I couldn't get the uh, seal head out because there was a bunch of nitrogen on the inside in the oil. So I had to, because these are piggyback reservoirs, I can crack these Allen screws on the top and just get it enough cracked where uh, what you heard there was the nitrogen uh, leaking out. And then now to the point, we got some oil dripping out. So now the nitrogen should be out of there and I can flip this thing back over and actually take this thing apart. But uh, the oil's pretty uh, dark gray, blackish looking with the nitrogen in there. Um, I kind of expected this. I knew uh, this is what I was going to run into when I tore this part. This isn't the first time I've had nitrogen on the back side of these. Um, these shocks are quite old. Um, if you see me out there, I obviously run them quite a bit. I'm going to have to really give these things some love this time. I think doing some honing, but anyways, thought that was kind of interesting. Maybe uh, see, uh, see something if you are going to try to work on your own shocks. Um, definitely don't put them in a press, press that seal head down, take the C-clip out, and then let the press up. Uh, Cause it's, you kind of have a bomb. So you do have to get that, uh, you gotta get the nitrogen out as safely as possible in these situations. So if you have like a reservoir, if it's got like a, a remote reservoir with a hose, a lot of times you can crack those hoses and do the same thing I did kind of here with the Allen screws. Uh, you just gotta be careful cause you're obviously getting low on threads and if you have a lot of you know a lot of pressure behind there um you can rip threads out pretty easily a lot of this stuff is aluminum so uh what's the saying uh do at your own risk anyways i'll finish getting these broke apart I told you the shocks def needed a rebuild, but that might have been an understatement. Um, this is what happens if you don't service your shocks when they need to be serviced. Um, I'm missing a few shim pieces right in that area. 
Also, I'm missing a whole actual chunk of the piston right there. That's gone. Um, the oil was really pretty coming out. It was all really metallic-y and silver and shiny. Um, but anyways, oh, yeah, this was this is the wear band, um, what's left of it. It's supposed to be a bronze piece and have Teflon coating on it. Um, these pieces used to be connected with a little bit more material, and it was more like a round circle shape. That's what they're supposed to look like. Um, so yeah, I knew these were a little, uh, blown out. Um, I kind of figured they were bad. I didn't know they were that bad. Um, I really had to work at them, get them apart, but now that I got them apart, um, actually, you know what? I'm going to finish tearing this down. I just, uh, before I took this apart and laid it all out, kind of wanted to show it to you assembled, but I'm going to, uh, throw it back in the vise here really quick, tear it all apart, lay it all out just like that. And then I'll come back and show you. Okay, got them all broke down. We can see the damage and carnage a little bit better now. All those metal shavings aren't supposed to be in there, so just ignore those. Ignore that scratched up damaged piston. Just imagine that everything is sparkly and clean. And then we'll just go through this demonstration. So, now that everything's laid out, this here, Fox 2.5 internal bypass shock, and here is four king internal bypass shocks you can see quite a few different parts this uh red anodized doohickey that has the the nice little logo on it there's a shim stack that's all right that's inside of there and then with that inside of there these uh shock shafts if you take a look at these there's a hole in there there's a little set screw that set screw is what holds that red doohickey i just showed you on and then the end of this shaft is hollow to these uh, machined holes here and let's put that down and then we'll show you the so what goes in the end of that that hollowed out shaft and why it's hollowed out is on this body here oh there's a blue shop towel on there can't see past that uh, I might need a flashlight hang on we need a flashlight Okay, let's see here. Uh, there we go. Kind of see. Let's, oh man, I need a third hand. Ah, I found one. All right, see that that noodle? That uh, not a noodle. It's a it's a doohickey. It's a doohickey up there. It's a long, skinny doohickey. That when this shock shaft. Um, so imagine all this stuff is back together on the end of that shaft right there So when this thing is, you know when you're jumping or doing sweet whoops and this shaft is coming up in there Once the top of that shaft gets up to that doohickey is about in here the end of it that doohickey starts going inside of this doohickey and Starts closing off and pretty much. I don't know how to really explain it um, simple lemon turns, but pushes on this and bypasses oil hence internal bypass shock it's an internal bypass um it engages and or disengages however you want to look at it um more valving so as you come in it's got like a bump zone i guess i would kind of consider it if that makes sense does that make sense? I don't know if it makes sense to me. I might have said it wrong. But we'll move on. So the Fox IBP, the difference, if you look at the body here, inside, um, two and a half inch body. These are both two and a half inch IBPs. The difference is the Fox one has this internal sleeve in it. This is a 2.0 internal sleeve. And if you notice, there is some holes drilled in right there. And there's also some valve shimming here. Don't, don't mind all of the metal shavings from the shims that are wedged in between them. That's not supposed to be like that. So they're supposed to be laying flat. And then if you see, there is actually some holes. Uh, let's focus. There's some holes drilled underneath of them. Um, 
and then oil uh, let's see so then there's a 2.0 piston versus a 2.5 piston so this doesn't have an internal sleeve has this 2.5 piston that runs in there and all the internal bypassing is done with that doohickey going in that doohickey and pressing in these doohickeys this is all done um, a little bit more hmm, old school I guess valving hole size um, these these uh, are actual um, parts I ordered from Fox and uh, I made these I welded up the holes and then re welded or and then re milled this and then drilled all my own holes in this thing so this is a custom setup for uh, my C10 and then the valving with it and my I do have four internal bypass Fox coilovers all the way around and then I also have a three tube Fox bypasses around as well so all my coilovers are this setup and the reservoir is off this one I showed you because there was nitrogen on the back side um, I haven't torn that apart yet but ultimately these, these are gonna need a serious overhaul I got some damaged stuff in here some parts I'm gonna have to replace um, which I kind of knew that and I drove for like a month uh, last season and I knew they were blown I could feel them they were blown out I could feel there was nitrogen on the uh, wrong side of the IFP it was on the oil side but I just kind of decided to drive it around anyway I didn't feel like putting it up and I didn't feel like tearing apart and rebuilding all eight shocks with like three weekends to go and uh, this is what you get from that so anyways um, trying to think if there's any differences yeah, I think I already showed you the bronze wear band. These, you know, same thing. They have bronze wear bands, but that's what they look like uh, when you bring your shocks in on time to get uh, changed. You know, the oil in these was quite dirty. Um, the seals were blown out. There was leak, uh, leaking on one of the shafts pretty bad. So definitely you want to bring them in sooner than this. Um, if you see me in the dunes, you see me how much I drive my truck. I pretty much am at the point I have to rebuild my shocks three times a season. Uh, last year, I only did it twice, and this is kind of what happened. I was trying to make it only doing it twice last year, and the I really should have done it a third time, but I just chose not to, and now I've got more work to do because I did that. So I guess I'm back to probably rebuilding um, three times. So I'm going to rebuild these get beginning of the season here, and then probably around like July mid of the season i'll have to rebuild them again and then i really probably should rebuild them again for like the last um month and a half the dunes are open because that's really when i like to go a, mostly a lot the dunes really empty out then and there's not a lot of people up here so i go a lot then but anyways now i'm just rambling about myself and nobody cares about that back to shocks i think i covered everything that i kind of mainly wanted to cover as far as differences between the King internal bypass and the Fox internal bypass and just kind of what the components look like, what the insides look like, um, you know, shock shafts. This is just old school, regular shock shaft, you know, just uh, no inside doohickey. It's just a thread where this has got inside machining doohickeys. So different than uh, a regular King, just regular coilover. It will have, you know, the same type of, uh, shaft is that but um, a lot more valving stacks and setup in here and um for me you know both shocks every i'm not um i'm not a person that's like don't buy this don't buy that if you ask me what i buy and if you ask me to put something on your truck i'm gonna pick this shock every time the fox internal bypass um i've just spent a lot of time with it um especially with my c10 i really like the options of what you can do with that that being said, I will say I don't have one and I haven't even worked on one yet. They just came out. If you uh, follow ADS shocks and know them, they have an internal bypass shock that they've just released that honestly is a way better design than this Fox design. Um, un instead of having to weld up and machine like your own holes in this, um, they have a sleeve, a sleeve design system. But this internal sleeve is threaded and they have collars that you can thread up and down to block holes off or on. And they already have a bunch of holes drilled in the tube. So without any work, you're able to tune in those internal bypasses by turning, you know, essentially kind of like this. It'd be threaded and then you'll have a nut on it. And then in this body, there's a bunch of holes drilled in it. 
in different spots and there's a bunch of different collars up and down it and you can spin them uh, to either open them, close them, open them only halfway, different stuff like that. I think, I think. I've only watched their uh, teaser video. Um, if you want to chill, check those shocks out. They have a video out on them and they show you all the stuff. So you can see what I'm talking about. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed some uh, shock talk with Dune Hippie. Peace.